Henry, you hear me? As you prepare to share your document or PowerPoint, I'm going to request one of the senior OBs already online to give us just over one minute to give us uh, opening remarks. And then hopefully Dan will be ready with his presentation. So I'm going to request uh, um, uh, our senior Baguma Richard. I think he was the first one to join or the second. Uh, Baguma Richard, if you're able to, Kindly give us uh, over two minutes opening remarks and then we proceed. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, once again, Baguma, Richard, my name, 8389. Uh, for me, it's, um, it, it's a step in the right direction that we are able to every Saturday take off an hour or two to rejoin, reconnect, rekindle the networking, but also have a talk from the experiences, the learning um, uh, and the relearning that we have got over the years since we were at the den and to now. So, so, so for me, this is uh, invigorating, it's energizing, and I hope we can continue from it. Mr. Chairman, in the past, I have on the chat raised the issue of uh, growing this network um, in terms of wealth creation. We are getting the wealth of the mind, uh, which is uh, perhaps the first instance of wealth. And that's what we got from the den and onwards. I would like to challenge ourselves to start creating the wealth of money um, and other things. I, in my view is that this is a, an extremely powerful network of hundreds of people who are empowered in different ways, including financially, and who can build on that to empower ourselves even more. So I, I, this keeps coming back to me, and, uh, and I love to share it, that we can prepare. Because you know we are getting to the evenings uh, of our times. We want it, we don't want it. And so I think it's critical that we think about this so that we have comfortable evenings, like we have, we had comfortable mornings and for many of us afternoons. And, and, and I think that's something that we need to, to put our minds to. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank, of course, the administrators of this platform, the ones who put, up it, who put it up, but also the ones who administer it uh, and the one who keep it going. And I'm hoping that uh, we can pioneer, uh, not just an effort, but again, we can pioneer as OBs and people from the den, yet another effort in wealth creation that the others can learn from, because as usual, we lead and the others follow. I thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senior Richard Baguma. Uh, members, today's session is a bit unique. Half of the participants are ladies. I don't know, is it because we are going to, dis uh, to discuss issues of finance, issues of financial literacy, probably that indicates how interested ladies are and uh, also most probably how good they are at financial management. Dan Babu, I'm going to request you to begin your presentation. Kindly spare the first minute to talk about yourself when you are at Intari, what you did, what you do, and how you got here. Thank you very much for the next 40 minutes. It's Daniel Babu Nerirwe who will take us through. Then as usual, the last 20 minutes, we use it for a question and answer session and an additional 20 minutes for our usual bar talk. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you, Dixon. I hope I'm clear, I'm loud and clear. I relocated to my compound. 
for better signal. Daniel, you're, you're, very, you're very loud and clear. Make sure you stay where you are, even when it rains. Thank you. <laughs> I'm climbing a tree for now. Stay up there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dixon. And uh, Lions, I need to, to set off with the presentation. And uh, the, the fun will be shared much later. I have too much fun to share, but I think I can reserve it towards the end there. So that in case uh, rain disrupts network, we shall have covered uh, most of, uh, of what we will uh, we, we, we were here to get. Yes, and um, I'm sharing my, my uh, this is how I look like. For, for the sake of those who may not be remembering me or just relating to how far now I look. So we, I will get it off for better network and uh, we continue with the, with the presentation itself. Yes, I'm uh, Daniel Babonerilwe, as you said, most of you on the forum know me as uh, Dan Babu. And uh, I'm uh, the CEO of uh, Bana Concert. And we are, our office is found and located at Kanjocha House, Kanjocha Street. That is the building. That's how it looks like. The parking is our usual Ugandan style. The, this is the perspective of Bana. The, it should, the vision of uh, Bana is the acclaimed debt solutions hub in Africa. It's a vision. We are still dreaming it, and we are still going strong. Baguma said we are retiring, but retiring with why? You put on your tires because the experience we have got is so, so big, and we have gone through a lot. Now, that is our vision. That is our mission. Those are our values, professionalism, integrity, innovation, and excellence. We do nothing less than that. Now, what is Bana in full? Bana in full is a renaissance, nurture, apex. So business, apex, nurture, and renaissance. We start, we don't do deal with only those who are progressive, but even those who have taken a dip, like in this COVID period, and we make sure you get a renaissance and actually get much higher than you were before COVID. That is with COVID, but in uh, business as usual, we normally sector-wide credit solutions, and we also look for it, matching the financing with the investment, loan structuring, uh, looking at the financing cost, bank scouting, loan reconstitution, Loan reconciliation is making an, an, a loan, an old loan new. Making old loans new and cheaper, renegotiating bad loans, sourcing. Then on the part of the banks, what we give them is risk management. The risk management is for credit risk management systems, credit risk policy, credit appraisal, disbursement, monitoring and collection, where it's outsourced. We have quite a number, mostly investment clubs who have outsourced this to us. And then uh, process manuals, and uh, then training. Training is the hardest, is the, is the one where we deal with the people. And uh, here we look at the three dimensional of credit management. Now that is Daniel, uh, I've, I'm an economist from Makere University. I've done postgraduate studies at uh, UMI and uh, accredited uh, credit banking courses. As, and as specialized as that. I've been uh, head of credit administration at Barclays Bank, now Abusa, head of credit control at Nile Bank, the famous Nile Bank, and the senior commercial officer, Ministry of Trade and Industry. Now, this I've been at this for more than 27 years now. And um, I've been a banker, I've been a lender, a credit manager, a borrower, a collector, a consultant, and above all, I'm a Rotarian. I need to, I give back to society. This is what I'm doing right now. A civil servant, um, uh, I was the original architect of the Bubu policy, and, uh, and, the gold, and the gold mine policy, though it has never come out, 
and I was also part of the of the of the NPA National Planning Authority, and uh, as a representative of the trade uh, sector, and uh, I'm now a business owner, and uh, my life purpose, the dream is about African integration, starting with ESC. Now, business from business ownership to business leadership, because we we still lack a lot in that area in Africa. Uh, now we have this quote, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life but by what we give. Now let's always try and give, as uh, Senior Obi Richard has, uh, has uh, said. Now let me, as we go back, before we delve into the subject of tonight, let's stand back and set um, some background. We all started commerce. Uh, not 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 necessarily all of us, but we at least we have heard of it. What's a bank? What do what do we define it? Not a academic one, but what's a bank? What do we what do you think of when you hear bank? A bank one, it's a business. Very few of us think of it as a business. Now the bank is not a government. The bank is not a saint. The bank is not a devil. The bank is normally very, very risk averse, very guarded in terms of physical and, uh, and, uh, and actual risk systems. It's an intermediary, as we all know it, taking uh, funds from the surplus spending units to the deficit spending units. It has its many risks, but in general, there are four risks. The biggest being the reputational risk, the other one being the liquidity risk, the operational risks, and the credit risk. What we are talking about is largely into the credit risk and how banks behave. Uh, and we, the banks are always heavily regulated under the Financial Institutions Act, at least for Uganda. And the bank is one of the institutions that really minds its business. We should learn from it. Now, we are talking about what the bank won't tell you. Now, what if it told you? Would you listen? Now, there is a, a banker mindset versus entrepreneur mindset. The banker is risk averse and looks for all risks in anything, even, even where it doesn't want to get answered. Uh, the banker and entrepreneur speak totally different languages. They are the same words, but different languages. Every word for a banker it uh, it means something else to from mostly what you mean different risk appetites we have talked about it any entrepreneur has a high risk appetite and a banker is the opposite now do we ever read our our letters of offer do we ever read our agreements when we sign con uh, credit contracts how many of us do now when they tell you you can now draw your money. What anxiety, or as you are chasing it towards drawdown, what anxiety holds you? The same as when the when the car owner, the car sellers make you sit in the car, and you start itching on driving that Mercedes away. Emotion, emotion, emotion. Emotion normally comes in the way of communication. Now, must we take loans? Now, these are issues. These are things. Loan is something we love hate or hate to love whichever way you start from now entrepreneur and the saver are the ones where who gives the bank an opportunity without the two the banks would close they are the loans and the taking credit are actually really necessary evils which in many cases i believe uh, part of our audience, we have uh, maybe 90 percent, maybe only only five percent or 10 percent have not had uh, that need to take a loan. More ideas when you have more ideas than money. Now you, that is the time you actually really need a bank because you don't have all the time in the world. Now you all, you have less time than patience. I'm running through that because the main topic is ahead. OPM now, anybody who has done something big, in most cases has used other people's money in one way or the other. And that's what the bank is about. 
if you are to do a big project, by the time you save for it and you get all that money, you will be dead. So you means you never achieve your dreams if uh, largely there are some special ones who have become the bank instead of going to the bank. So, and all of us remember this calculation of uh, principal P times T times R, principal times time times rate. And on the other, uh, it equals interest. Now, this interest, and at the end of the day, it's in money and also in human terms. Sometimes it comes up with, as stress. Now, banks are financial intermediaries, as we have seen. They are not angels, they are not NGOs. Now, banks manage their risks. If, if anyone in this organization, maybe, I don't know if CAA does better than banks, uh, the airlines might be the only one which is better than banks at really minding their risks. Now, majority of us, when we think about uh, loans, the biggest emotion that comes first is the fear factor. Fear factor, because we hear almost all stories about how people have, uh, loans have sunk people. But uh, for an entrepreneur, the risk appetite, it's not that the fear goes away, but the risk appetite is always much higher, and most cases blinds them from analyzing the risks that they are faced and how to counter them. Now, we all should really learn from banks and uh, manage our risks. But your bank may not tell you, may not even warn you. I don't think that the bank even has all that time and patience also to tell you on how you should manage your own risks. You are lucky if you have a bank that really goes down and shows you your risks and don't run away from you. Because uh, many of us have this saying that um, a bank is a place where you go give, that gives you an umbrella when it's shining and when it starts raining, it takes away the umbrella. And um, it may be true or not true, but uh, this is what the, credit, the bank credit cross, if you want to understand the mindset of a banker. This is the credit cross, this is the cross they carry. But the credit cross in that it has both vertical logic and horizontal logic. Actually, this is the topic I had wanted to present, but uh, from discussion with Dixon, we agreed that you know we could do what your banker won't tell you. Now, the, in a managing risk, there is, it has formed dimensional, uh, dimensions of risk. But these four dimensions take a vertical logic and horizontal logic. Now, the institutional view of credit, the macro view of credit, and the micro view, not microfinance, get it clear, the micro view. Now, the, the institutional view is where you look at the, at the vertical logic. This is the cross down, starting with the philosophy. The, every institution starts with a philosophy. That philosophy will, will predetermine most of the things that are going to be done or the direction it's going to take. Now, if SOPA is going to set up, say, a circle or an investment club, the, probably the development of, uh, of uh, its members or even, uh, even uh, what it will pass over to its, uh, like Baguma said, we are in the evening of our time, what it will pass over and uh, how it will assist us in the, in the coming stages is much more important about the philosophy more than even the profits. So the policy drives from the philosophy because once you have determined that it's not necessarily as high profit as possible in any circumstance, then the policy also must draw that line. Now, the, the in between at the cross itself now, the process, you must then go down from the policy and determine the process that will implement the policy and backwards fulfill the philosophy. Then you must look at also what, what system or what machinery, what ICT you are going to use to make sure it complies with the above two as well, above three. And then lastly, and probably most important, the people. The people who run that system must be people who are knowledgeable and also have the zeal for the philosophy the poli and the policy 
therefore the process they know it's a cost they must pay for the philosophy to be a, to be accomplished and uh, once we do that then the horizontal logic you have what you call the value chain of credit now this is from sourcing where you source the clients also matters how you do the appraisal and vetting and how you do the monitoring now at process their disbursement that's where it goes now after disbursement the client becomes the king and the bank becomes the beggar Zowolo today that is my Uganda here and um, monitoring and the collection I'm rushing through that today's uh, now we have many there are many 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 appraisal systems we can have the the Campari which is the most not just an appraisal system but this is a canon of taxation because it applies in all all the systems it comes back now this is what bankers take and make into a number and a score sheet and now why am i telling you all this if you are not interested in running a bank you need to know what compared standards for and then you can actually pre pre-score yourself even before you approach a bank and know how you are standing then you know you are negotiating power now character that normally determines the willingness to pay the ability to pay is uh, is the the financial viability of your business now the margin is if this business is making enough profit that it will be there in the longer term because most of the loans are paid by cash flow but if the margin is not there then the chances are it will be going south purpose the purpose of the loan even if it's so profitable if you say you are going to buy tear gas then it's not allowed the purpose may not allow the the, the, the concept is dead from what the, from concept but uh, generally commercial uh, business wise speaking the purpose should be to build the organization not for the sake of just taking a, a facility or replacing dead stock now amount the amount matters because it's amount amount itself can kill a business and the business will kill the owner or the owner will kill the business as well now the the repayment what you propose as repayment if i'm running a school and i tell you i'm going to be paying you monthly chances are including even the holiday chances are i'm not telling the truth and i'm not being realistic and i've not analyzed my risks so the repayment end term and the duration matters quite a lot now insurance is not insurance per se but it comes last not by chance but uh, on purpose insurance as well stands for for um, for collateral and many of us actually make a mistake of putting collateral at the beginning and once we put collateral at the beginning it becomes uh, a very funny a funny relationship with a bank because it's like you are looking at defaulting so uh, the dictum of uh, credit is that if you can't lend someone to someone uh, without security even when they produce security they still don't lend them the the, the the example i could give is uh, if you have a car which is a dmc however much insurance you put on it you cannot say because i have a lot of insurance on this car let me drive it to guru no it's already it's already a dmc so you should not attempt even if it's double insured now i want to us to look at uh, three case studies uh there's one case study called the uh, tda uh, maybe i will have a chance to look at the full details now this tda was um yeah if you if you maybe let me share with them share the them at the end uh can you change, change it? just a second i, I want to change uh, screen share a different one tda Now, I, we have a case here, a case study of TDA. TDA was borrowing in dollars, but disbursement was in shillings. Now, first, he was constructing a, a mall in one of the cities upcountry. Now, phases of construction, 
uh, the, this is what the, he was the, the analysis. TDA went to the bank after going there. I had asked him actually to come and withdraw what we want, but he had not. So he went, and this was what the critique that was in the in the offer letter. Now he he disbursement was in it was in it been shillings, but the loan was in dollars. That creates a lot of many other problems. Then the phases of construction were not specified. Therefore, the bank wanted to disburse the whole two billion in one go. Then uh, there was nothing like delaying of disbursements until when it's needed. Now, this is a gentleman who was going to be shopping building materials from China over a period of, say, 12 months, but this money is going to be given upfront now. Now, between disbursement between construction stages was not a consideration that was given, which would give actually this client a temptation for diversion. And once this money is diverted, then you 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 are not likely to, to recover from that ditch. Now, disbursements uh, between stages could be short could could be shorter, but uh, the bank was was uh, not considering them at all. And uh, and um, that, that, that you should determine that when you are in there, you should determine the frequency according to the critical path of the project you are taking. Now the the um, anchor tenant who the client was looking at should uh, should uh, the, 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 the were the payments of the anchor tenant were not at all matched with the with the installments that were given. And even the lead time when the anchor tenant would pay in the first installment, the first rent. Now, we, we, the client, we advise him to have the liberty of uh, not existing all the amount. Because if you say you have promised uh, to take, uh, say, two billion, it does not matter if I've used only one billion. Roll faster. Uh, uh, now, the anchor tenant put funds area because if it, this is was a very strategic building anchor tenant could actually put money faster now interest should also have depended on amounts dispersed not predetermined because this was a loan uh, allegedly called the uh, amortization now the interest wanted to be predetermined whether you have used the money or not now actually the interest amount alone was thirty one thousand dollars which could actually be brought down as low as $1,000. Now, um, amount authorized and amount dispersed not, that do not necessarily have to be the same, and you must put so in a contract. Now, operation account and the takedown account, the takedown account is where the, 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 the bank picks its money to repay itself, do not necessarily have to be the same as long as you are still running with the same bank. Because one, if any delays happen, then you will be perpetually in an overdraft situation. And an overdraft now will be charging its own interest, which is not the interest on the loan. So you are already paying double already when it's already high. Now, bank may offer preferential rates if requested. Now, if you insist, it's like walking to a shop. If you don't bargain, Really, the, 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 the shopkeeper would be insane to start bargaining with you that they can reduce the price. And that's what normally happens in banks because uh, we don't think we can, uh, we can, um, we can negotiate. Uh, now, the, the rate itself should be a floating rate. Now, this is a, a real case study of one person we really helped. And only that intervention saved him 50 million straight in interest. Uh, the, 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 the interest rate should be floating so that you can also benefit. Now, you can also be tactical if it's not and you predict you have studied and you see that rates are going to increase, then you can leave it fixed. Then it will be the bank to be left holding the, the, the chikapu. Now, banks should specify term of the loans and, uh, and formula on how it will be arrived at. Not just the question that we have approved this money, and put in whatever they want, then they leave it. You should also be having in mind what you think should be appropriate for you. 
then uh, then uh, now this was a, a, a loan which was at 10 percent of uh, in dollars but uh, but um it had a, a, a this was prime that's what you call prime raining it was at be at prime price three and that would be very high but getting negotiating for such a good well secured and viable business at 10 percent you could negotiate and get it or even minus some people negotiate and get minus now it remains fixed should be shown to be so if it remains fixed then it should be so, shown so and, uh, and if loan goes for five years it will effectively be at 15.5 percent at 13.5 percent and so now there you factor in the time it may not be just the 10 percent as reflected but the compounding effect and the, the time effect now we could negotiate uh, this one, this was to do with, uh, I think, uh, commitment fees. It could be lower, 0.25%. That's not too high. Now, legal fees, we are going at 0.5%. Now, a big amount really does not take many lawyers, too many lawyers looking at it. It could, the, the rate could come lower. Mortgage, if you, if you can, you can have a mortgage actually going across titles. If you are providing more than a title, so you don't have to double mortgage. I I believe uh, you can stop here and we keep up with it. I'm not sure what background knowledge, uh, whatever. We shall finish it. If we... Yes. Now, case number two. This is a summary one. I'm not having another presentation. This was a Miller from uh, from one of the country cities uh this is a gentleman who came to the bank and uh, and uh, and um, he was given he negotiated and he got a rate of uh, of uh, of uh, prime to be given at prime rate which was at 18 percent that time now he goes uh, somehow not very satisfied but uh, he says, let me study your letter of offer. Now he goes, because many banks are always running around, he goes to the other bank, which was also calling him and says, can you match this? Can you beat this offer? Because these guys have refused to give me 15. Now, the reaction, obviously, what the, 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 the loan officer will always be telling you is that, I hope bankers on the forum don't shoot me for this. Uh, is that they tell you that we can't give below that. But when you come with a letter of offer, which is below that, they will say, okay, let's see the, what the MD will say, or credit committee. It's beyond me. That's the next step it will go. Now, when you come with that one, then the MD has to make a political decision. It's no longer business, but winning that business means your bank is a winner. Mostly if the person is a great opinion leader in the business community. Now, this gentleman came back to us with a letter of offer reading 15%. He came back to us, he said, you guys, you are going to cheat me, I cannot bring business to you. Of course, our own uh, big shots had to go and give him a, a rate of, uh, of 13%, which the other bank failed to meet again. Now, I think that one was a smart businessman. Now, we were, at that point, we are not calculating how much you are going to make from this guy, but how many other leads are going to come from him. Now, there was another gentleman, Toto. Now, these are not all real names, but if you translate, sometimes they mean the same. This was a guy who went and got a, constructing a building, now the same as TDA, but now the guy's strategy was different. He goes to the, to the bank, he gets an approval, he gets a letter of offer. He, he even signs the contract, but says now he, he will draw down later. Now he goes and, uh, and uh, he draws down only a small percentage. It was about, uh, he drew about only $10,000. Went overnight and started trucks running left, right, and center. The building started coming up and everybody started running to them because it was so much of a central location and he would ask you to pay to pay half a year in advance and when he completes he would want you to complete the other otherwise he would give it people are lining up 
and the rate of construction was so high that nobody could really start uh, to see their prized location go away. At the end of the day, from the 50,000, it was about, he had, he had requested for about $200,000. He ended up by accessing only $50,000. Now he used the money from the tenants who were, who were struggling to, to book posi position at no interest at their, maybe they borrowed. I don't know, it, I don't know where they got it from. Maybe they borrowed and they are now paying the interest, but the guy is actually using their money now to construct for them and they pay him rent. Now, what do your banker want to tell you? I think we are already halfway through the, the presentation because we have already seen a lot on that. You can envy the price yourself. The reason we, we went through Kampali was that um, you can, later on, if we have time, we could look at the numbers. How do you calculate Kampali on yourself? You can go to, with your own price to the bank and then say the bank should give you at that price. But because we don't know how to evaluate ourselves and give ourselves a price, the bank gives it it's a price and then you don't respond. You don't even challenge how that pricing has been gotten. Now you can turn the tables. You saw how Mira turned the tables. I don't think I should go and, uh, and uh, over explain that. Now you can actually have MDs lining at your bank, at your, at your business, if you build, but the key point is building that character and assessment of ability to pay. Once it's predicted that you, you are the, the guy to fight for, you are the guy to keep, people can even agree to lend you without interest. You can set the terms. I, I don't want to over explain. You can set the terms and those terms will be followed if you have followed Kampali. But if every bank is running away from you, setting those terms becomes a Hegelian task. It's next to impossible. Now, uh, you can also put your risks under control. It's not just costing, but even your risks, the exposure, because what you negotiate is not only the pricing, but what is the risk? Because someone will want you to mortgage everything you have so for you to get a loan. But you also don't want to, because any business can go down, even if you run it well. Ask COVID, ask Mr. COVID. They know how to take down uh, businesses. Now you can actually laugh at loans. Many of us, when we think about loans and we think of taking a big loan, our, our stomachs grumble, including myself. But we can, have, we can afford actually sometimes to laugh at loans. Many times I've also I've had an opportunity of laughing at loans I've taken. Many times I've also had to bite my teeth and my lip. Now, the, the, the whole of it is just summarized as mind your business. Because the business minds, the bank minds its business. Why shouldn't we mind our own? Why should we expect the bank to tell us what, what we should mind for our business? Yes, the bank loves to do business with us, loves to make money from us, and loves to make it, see us grow, but it does not mean it should come and run our risks, run, manage our, our business, and see what is best for our businesses. Now, a bank is not a supermarket. A supermarket is a place where you go to, and you, the, 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 the label, you, you, you find it's not negotiable. You just have to buy it at that price. But someone also said, even in a supermarket, they bargain. Yes, ask, ask the, the big, big, big purchasers. Now, the bank is also not an NGO. It's not there to see you per se grow. Now, your growing is a win-win. But it does not mean if you run down your own business, it does not mean the bank should also go down trying to save you. And it's not a Shylock too. Most of us think of banks as heartless people who are Shylocks waiting for an opportunity to take your building. No, but if you go waving your building as the only basis or the main basis for lending to you, then there might be others who are saying that this man wants to sell it looks. Even in the worst of situations, uh, we can still bargain. Uh, you have heard of a, of, of a saying in schools mostly that if you can't make a good name, make a bad one. I'm not saying you go and fault, but at the worst time point of default, actually it's one of the best situations for a bargain. Yes, because uh, the bank is also worried. Fight or flight, choose neither. Just stay and look at what is there.
know your price position and options that is the summary of that now you can borrow without collateral now remember the campari the collateral we fitted it to insurance you can actually drive your car without insurance now if if you really feel so and you know uh, you want to be you want to be causing accidents that that won't stop the car from moving and that's how lo loans are looked at if it's so good enough banks will actually lend to you without collateral it's more said than done because of the risk averseness and of the environment but it's possible and it's being done now business can secure itself there is one man who who challenged me that uh, why do you ask me for personal guarantees when when i i made a, a company as a company limited and i wanted to limit my liability so much as possible mostly if the business is so big you don't have to go guaranteeing each and everything because that's why you made it a company limited liability limited but because the bargaining uh, power is uh, we put it low i mean the bank cannot come and bargain for you even me i will also ask you to guarantee say that i'm sure but if you know people are crying for you you can choose to say i've given you for example near liquid assets i have uh, treasury bills which i've given to you oblong the company which do you need me i need to 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 be graceful in my life the bank can situate itself yeah the, in in this situation sometimes the bank can situate itself because if you are getting supply and uh, and you can get a guarantee from the supplier who is a very well known brand and very secure i mean you don't need that security now balance sheet borrowing you can actually do balance sheet borrowing by looking at your payables and receivables now the receivables uh, your receivables largely your invoices can actually secure all your borrowing because in the first place if those guys were paying you, you wouldn't need to go borrowing. Uh, P and L borrowing now. This is uh, you, you. You are looking at the profitability of the business, and that's the basis of borrowing. It may not be from the, the current cash flow, but you are looking at the profit and loss. We need to be positive. We need to continue. We need to be continuing positive in the longer term. Now, cash flow borrowing, because the, from the P&L, this is where you would find large like expansion, expansion and uh, branches in, in, in footprint, etc. Because cash flow may, may, may not come as fast as where, as where you, you see it. But you rely on one, one, um, one business of the group, which is now becoming the parent company of the others. Say you are moving to Tanzania, you may not be having a pretty good prediction and trust that you are going to get make the money so you are lending this old business on behalf of the new business basing on the p and l now the cash flow borrowing is where you are looking now at the cash flows in uh, in not so long term this is medium term and uh, and uh, you see if they are positive therefore you can pay you can actually make losses but be able to pay loans because if you are if you are business is going to break even in five years that does not mean that's when you should be able to borrow no the, if the cash flows are positive you can borrow and pay back and then break even later now transaction borrowing this is where you can actually discount some invoices you have an invoice which is coming to you you go and and then you and discount you are going to, to, to clear taxes you don't have to carry your land title because the the tax the, the goods in the bond are much higher than what you want to borrow so why do you just go and uh, bring my my, my my baby's house now you there is also a new system called simple and uh, and um called simple which is by ursd and you can actually use your own goods uh or your own assets to to do what to to yes you can choose your own structure you don't have taken i think we have handled this in one way or the other now you don't have to choose the structure the bank has given you no you can actually choose your own structure for example if i'm a school i must say i want to pay only only timely the first and the second month of uh, of the children reporting i want my instrument that that way the rest 
I don't want any installment or at worst I, I repay only interest. Even interest can be compounded and sent over. Now they, they can be accrued, not compounded, accrued and sent over into the third month. For the third month, there is no cash flow for the school. Understand the derivation, how interrogate the bank, how do they drive this? Most of you have laptops, but you don't know they have all these uh, tools to drive such. Like how, how do you do an amortized trade? It, it's just a simple click. Now options, you need to know the options. Is it a amortized schedule the only option? Can I have reducing balance? Can I have a non-reducing balance? Can I have staggered? Can I have all these? And as long as there is justification. If I'm sending a guy, I don't see how you want to make me borrow and pay 12 months when I have only two months of insanity. Now, simple Excel tools, as I said, they are available. You can always use them on your laptop. Almost any laptop has, as long as it has Windows and uh, Excel. Uh, mm -hmm. Then um, you, you, when you are agreeing on these schedules, you should always have the pessimistic, the realistic, and uh, and uh, and uh, and optimistic. Now, whatever you put in the system, try as much as possible and negotiate to put in your pessimistic or the worst scenario, case scenario, um, uh, case. So if a business can afford to pay back five million, you don't just go there and agree to five million. No, you can actually, you can actually choose the, the pessimistic, uh, is it? Uh, the, 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 the pessimistic amount, which is say 1 million, and then for you strive to pay up, up front. And uh, most of you will be scared that you know the bank will, uh, will penalize me. No, you can also pay back without being penalized. Now, back to where we started, do you remember? The principal times rate times time. Now these are the these are the variables you have to play with. Right. In either negotiating the price, right. negotiating the rate, or the time to come up with the costing of your loan. Now you, you need to remember that calculation. Now you don't have to be a mathematician, just to remember that one. Then you see what am I touching in this case? How come I've not talked about rate? What can I talk about timing? Time and timing, then the interest, then uh, how what will it take in the case the worst case came now you have to be to be able to play the game uh there are, they said there are many ways skinning or skinning a cut i don't know what for and uh, and there are always other creditors now this one i'm telling you because the the the, the bank will not tell you that my creditors can also give you money will they they can't but that's a reality Long gone are the days when I started banking. <coughs> if you if you borrowed from me, you'd have to close all the other accounts. But I think we are more liberal, and uh, it's more of a, a more liberal situation now. People are, have knowledge and, and can understand. And then uh, the overdraft. An overdraft is actually a borrowing you can pay if you are well disciplined. I must underline that one. Strong, strong discipline. You can actually have an overdraft and you don't pay a single coin in in interest because an overdraft is a, is a standby facility which you may need to use or you may not need to use so most of the time if your balances are ending up at a, at a, for example if i draw 50 million in the morning and uh, someone else deposit 60 million midway the day now I've used your 50 million, but at the end of the day, because the bank balance will calculate at the end of the day, I don't have to pay you interest because I, my, I, my, my, my account slept in credit. So once you draw down and you are using an overdraft, make sure you also run to all the people who are owing you money and put them under pressure. Make sure they deposit so that you reduce any indebtedness that could be there at the end of the day. Now the, the guarantees, now, guarantees, uh, uh, one is a situation. So if I'm being supplied, say, by Toro Cement, Toro Cement gives me, gives me, gives me cement, and, uh, and then I must pay them cash. Now, that's really misuse. Because 
Toro Cement maybe is much more well heard than you. And uh, all they want to know is, uh, is if you are really reliable that you can pay. Now, taking guarantee from the bank will secure you very big amounts of supply, which your money will not be, would not be able to, to cover. But if you go with cash and give it to Toro Cement, Toro Cement does not care. Why you got the cash, they will not complain that why have you brought cash? LOCs are the same thing. We studied about them. You can always get these goods, and the payment is delayed as far as possible until you can. Most of our traders, they know they know better. They know their business better, and they know how they do it. But if you are already doing organized business, LOCs is one way of uh, of actually reducing financing costs. Because if I'm not pay you once my goods have reached uh, Kampala. I, I don't have to. There are so many people now with a lot of redundant cash. But the, their problem is who are the reliable guys we can supply on credit? They could compete with banks. They are banks' computers, actually. But the bank is not going to tell you that you must use LOCs. Instead of going to shop in China or, or, or France or wherever with the cash, come and we do an LOC. Because now when will they make money? Because if you immediately borrow, that very day they start making money but if you take an loc they will not never make money apart from the one of they charge you for processing it now bonds are the same if you are going to construct a road you are going to do big big uh, things you don't have to borrow cash to take and do it now these bonds same as guarantees you can actually do until you are paid it's released now letters of comfort you can actually if you have maintained now remember Kampari, you see it all goes back to our credibility. Now, now that's where the bank loves it because credibility is key. Now, once you have credibility that you are really honorable guy, the bank will give you a rate of comfort. Now that rate of comfort followed by your own trend setting with that company will get you uh, total cement to supply you with cement without even a guarantee. Because they know you are always selling, you are always straightforward, ETC. There are so many. If we had a full day, we'd have a look at many more. Um, now, always, now, now, this is one other, never stake your home. If you can avoid it, I, I must add that disclaimer. Never stake your home if you can avoid it. Now, this is what you deal at arm's length. You don't put your heart in that investment when people touch it, it will break. Uh, you need a safe haven when it rains. When it starts raining, you need where to run to. But when where you need to run to is mortgage door. So my God. Uh, now collectors love this. When you are in collection and someone has a home mortgaged, it's one of the best one of the best collection things to do because it speaks for itself. Because. Uh, it can even your wife, even your wife becomes a collector because as as a spouse, as a person who gives spousal consent, we always tell you at three, have you have this bank called you? Now I'm I'm sure you will not sleep, and you may not even enjoy other rights. You have no 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 one to turn to here. The people you should be running to are the ones looking at you as a cause of their likely problems to be thrown onto the street. You can't think rationally. At that point, what you are looking at is your children sitting on the street with all the saucepan and the dirty linen and or clean linen, so for that matter, private linen, thrown onto the street for all the neighbors and Lugambo people to say. What that Now, you are home at this point you are not thinking in terms of open market value even if your home is being can be can be fetching one billion and someone approaches with you with with two billions you are likely to say no because you don't want your home to go now that is ir irrationality and i'm sure many of us will make decisions because the home has so many memories and attachments and uh, and it, it's part of you so if you can avoid it please leave it because at a certain point, you may have need to sell your own collateral before the bank sells it to, for you at a loss. That is something you can also negotiate. And you can at worst have develop hypertension and other related diseases. Now, then, um, 
the next is uh, always have plan B. Now, this is something that we, because when we are going to borrow, I told you I've been a borrower, I've been a lender, a collector. When you are starting a journey in your car, you don't re, you don't put a spare tire when you have reached halfway the journey. No, the spare tire should be there, knowing that something can happen. Now, you should always figure the worst case scenario and smile. If you cannot smile once you have figured the worst case scenario, probably you should think of not taking that loan or practice until you can smile at that worst case scenario. Because if you can smile, you can still be rational. Now, you must have a counter strategy. If this happens, what will I do? What will happen? Because the bank will need money. It's not actually it's money. It's money other people have put in. The risk averse have posted to the bank and uh, and uh, and uh, those with high risk appetite have taken away so they will need it basically and uh, uh, always call the bank now you should always be the one to bombard the bank with with calls now have a trusted friend for perspective you can reach a point and when you cannot think now that friend should always be the one to think for you now in a collection sometimes you would go to someone's office but the person will actually not respond to any of what you have told them, even beautiful proposals. But when you find another person who, who whom they respect, there is always chance for a discussion and a win-win solution. Now, always have some near liquid assets or things you can quickly liquidate in the case of such a scenario. Now, you always have to balance the boat. Don't go down with it. Balance the boat. Now, you, of course, now we are talked about you, you don't have to do what? Collector main banking now is not a sin. But avoid multiple borrowing. If you are going for that banking mono polygamy, avoid multiple borrowings. Try to avoid them, uh, one of them at a time. Uh, worst case scenario, we have talked about it. Get, laugh at yourself. If you fall, laugh at yourself. And get up, brush yourself, you get used to it. Now, in uh, and once you're in default, now we, I said we never we never prepare for this. So when it comes, it hits us so hard. Now, the bank is not going to be there to tell you that when you default to do like this, because one, in the first place, it also expects you not to default, and you actually promised and over convinced it that you will never default. So now when it comes, it hits both of you. And once in Uganda, more, there is a, a culture which believes that uh, once you don't lie to a bank, it will never give you money. No, that's a lie. But uh, it has been so believed that it's almost the truth, that the bank also expects that you are going to lie to them. That's why they oversecure themselves. Now, there is a, this is a spaghetti bowl of emotions. At that point of default, there are so many emotions. Because remember when you started, even if you never had a loan, to have a project and it fails, it doesn't come out right. A loan is, is a killer that you have failed to attain your, you just think about it. You started building a house and it has not gotten tenants. You are putting your money, it's your own money. But now in this case, you have not only failed, but there is someone else there to, to, to remind you all the time that you are actually useless now. Now, uh, not that they intend to say that you are useless, but when they call you, you really can't believe you are the same person who was over enthusiastic. Now, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a total reverse of, uh, of uh, sudden total reverse of uh, realities that actually leave many, many with stroke and, uh, and, and high blood pressure. Then uh, accept the situation. Once you accept the situation, you can now start putting it into perspective. Now, this is the second best time to negotiate. The Chinese say the best time to plant a forest was 50 years ago, but the second best time is now. Now, the second best time to negotiate is now because you almost have no choice and the bank also needs to get out of this in an honorable manner. Now, sort emotion from numbers. Try some, get someone who can actually work out different scenarios with the right numbers for you to make the final endorsement of decisions. Now, unrelated emotional uplifters, you must look for other motivators that are outside the situation that should bring you up, whether it's church, whether it's uh, dancing, whether it's uh, having a target of losing weight, 
Now, the more you run to lose weight, the more you actually get the solutions to work out this. But the more you think about this one alone, the easier you are to become a candidate of Butavika. Now, the best time, this is the best time to lift your game because you have nothing much more to lose. Because beyond that, you, you, are, you are out in the, in the open. You can now still go out in the open as a case study of, 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 of never giving up. Now, this, you regard this as vaccination. Now, once you have fallen here, they say, once bitten, twice shy. Now, you, 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 you very well know now how to put it into, into considerations of, uh, of, um, of uh, when you are borrowing now. Now, again, in default, you should avoid the five Fs. Fear, that is always the biggest enemy in us, even it stops us, many of us even reaching the bank. Fight. Now, majority of us, when we get a letter from the bank, the, 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 the temptation or the first thought is actually to run to your lawyer. And then the lawyer will answer back. I hope I have lawyers on the forum. You will answer back with the message what they can find in the, in the, in their law school. Fright. Now this is a point of total panic, and you are you are you are running out. Does that lift? The 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 fright, then the flight. Now flight. Some people take cover, go and run away, run to Congo, and leave the, these problems. Fright. Now that is the point at where you now start falling sick. Even any call, even if it's not from the bank, can make you switch off the call, the phone. Uh, now, always call the bank. We have talked about it. Now, the banker is a relationship. Once you are calling them, they separate ability, ability to pay from willingness to pay. It shows really you are not hiding, you are not running away, but things went south. Now, visit the bank. Just keep visiting the bank. It, it, it creates an image of a solution being found and someone owning up. Pick all your calls, don't switch off the phone. Because if you call, it's less stressful than being called. So if you, when you call, actually the banker will always not call you because they know you are about to call them and you are going to work out something. And it gives chance because they are not as guarded. Because as you engage a client when you are in a bank, there are some things you don't want to let out of the cart, out of the bag, not the, not the cart, out of the bag. Uh, because they may be used against you, as, as, as all firms end, can be used you, against you in a court of law. So some of the things you don't say, but when someone keeps calling you and visiting, now you become more free with them, and then you can find a win-win solution. Engage, that's what we are saying. The bank is also more worried than you. Remember, this is not their money. They have Bank of Uganda supervisors coming. They want, they want this out of the way. And the, the longer you stay, the more they get agitated and you start concluding, the bank wants to take my property when it's actually not. And uh, the bank has, an, otherwise it would change and, uh, and go into real estate. Uh, understand the banker's pressure. That is the banker's pressure I'm talking about. When, they, when the supervisors from BOU are going to visit you, you actually uh, almost never sleep. Because for them, everything they look at is risk, is risk, is risk. Now, keep your lawyer behind the curtains. I'm not saying don't keep a lawyer, but the lawyer, they can draft that letter for you. Then you smoothen it. You agree that it can go. It's not leaking you down, but it's not threatening uh, the bank, unless you have all decided that that's the way to go. Now, retain balanced advisors. You need to have balanced advisors in all this. Uh, you... So this is where we are back where we started, and this is what it is. And, uh, and um, but at the end of it, we have been all through this. The bank is a financial intermediary. It's not a saint, it's not a devil, but we must manage to manage our own risks. Because the bank also strives to manage its risks. So let's learn from the banks and mind our business, just like it minds its own. Uh, thank you very much, members. And uh, probably, if uh, this time, I think I've managed to live within my time. And uh, you can have questions, Dixon. Yes, Dan, 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 Daniel. Of course, you, yeah, yeah. You just uh, went overboard by about two, five, ten minutes. Not bad. Now, I, we already have many questions which were posted on the chat side. I'm going to request you, Dan, because I have to read them. 
take note of them and then uh, you give response uh, after I've read them. Uh, but before that, I want to, okay, I just learned two things. One, that the MD can actually beg me. So I'm going to look for ways of how I can do that starting on Monday so that my bankers MB, MD can also beg me. And um, I also want to determine my rate in the bank. If they offer me at 18, I want to negotiate with them up to around 12. I hope that time comes. <clears throat> we have around five, six members who have been with us from the time we began in July. And uh, I really want to thank and appreciate them. Then Paul Mungereza, Dr. Alan, there are many, Milton architect, architect Milton, and William Cambona, and others. There are those around five who have never missed a session. Uh, thank you very much. There are ladies. Today's session has uh, more ladies than uh, the usual ones we get. Uh, thanks for joining us, Elizabeth, uh, Tracy. Um, there were many, the Sophie K, ETC, ETC. Thanks so much for, for attending our today's session. Now, um, I hope the Manchester football game is over. If it's not over, but we are married. Uh, let me read for you, Dan, the questions I have here. Then after we shall have another like five questions from the audience, and then we get a response to them. So the first one is, um, how does the bank get back its money once a borrower defaults on a loan without a corrector, e.g. a salary loan where there is no letter of undertaking? Does it recover from the insurance company, especially when the borrower leaves employment? So I'm employed, I take a loan, I default. How does the bank recover its money? Because these days I've seen the employers in the letter of undertaking, they put a clause saying that in case of default, we shall not undertake a financial blah, 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 meaning they are not going to pay. Number two, in case you want to pay back the loan before maturity, why does the bank charge us a penalty? This thing has always been me. Why, if you want to pay in advance, then you have to incur a penalty. Number three, in case one obtained a loan on chattels, I don't know what chattels means, but I know Dan knows, as in case one obtained a loan on chattels as security and defaults and changes location, hey, what does the bank do as far as recovery? I hope you've noted that uh, you can actually change location after taking a loan, they will look, look for you. In the recent past, uh, the bankers have been involved in several what we want to call illegal transactions and they have frustrated customers and customers have lost properties. I think a few months ago, especially during the COVID lockdown, there are two big banks which had issues with uh, two huge clients, one in Luzira and one in Nakasero. If I remember well, like Daniel had indicated earlier, one of them actually died, a lady. Does this mean the banks or the bank employees uh, have become unfaithful to the customers? You give us a highlight on that. Uh, the last one I have, is it good to make capital, the last one here, is it good to make capital reduction on loan outstanding principal amount? I'm reading it the way it is. Is it a good idea to make capital reduction on loan outstanding principal amount? That's how it is written. Um, I'm going to request uh, those who have questions, we do it the way we always do it. You, you raise your hand, then when we mention your name, you unmute and give us your question. Dan, uh, most of us are not worried about taking loans. We are not risk averse. We don't read the letters of offer. If I can pick money from a money lender, I don't need to read the letter of offer from uh, an established banking institutions, uh, uh, like the commercial banks. That's a by the way. Do you have questions 
uh, you raise your hand. If you're using a gadget that can't raise your hand, then you just unmute and you fire your question. Then you get moving. We just have a little minutes to end the session, probably 10 to 15. Techno, come on, you didn't rename yourself. So how do I address you now? I will say Techno, come on 17P. Please fire your question. Okay, uh, you've muted again. Next question. Um, okay, it seems we don't have questions. Dan, can you answer the ones I've read out as we, let me just give you another three, uh, three questions and then you answer at a go. Uh, this one here is saying, okay, hello, D hey, this one is asking, how do I join future meetings? Okay, I'll reply that one, uh, Tracy. Uh, I hope you're still there. I uh, will sort ourselves offline. Dan, kindly answer those questions uh, within like five minutes, then we can have another set of questions. Yeah, th thank you. Thank you, Dixon. And uh, it's good to hear people firing back questions. It means uh, they have been attentive and have also been hurt. At one point, sometimes with poor network, you wonder whether people are listening in or whether they have gone away. Now, the number one is the, um, how do you get people, how do people pay back without collateral? When they are, don't have collateral, do they pay from their insurance? Now, the, the one, number one, statistically, actually, people who, the, the loans that are taken with collateral and the loans that are taken without collateral have the same percentage of pay, paying back of repayment. Number two is that uh, when you take insurance, when you take insurance on uh, on um, when you take insurance on uh, on uh, on uh, on a loan, mostly like these salary loans, majority of the banks what they take is called uh, is they show only two risks, death and disability. There are very few which go ahead at a higher premium, even risk uh, uh, insure even like loss of a job. But the death and disability is what is normally done, uh, uh, covered. So you have to prove that you are either dead or you are disabled beyond employment. Then that's when insurance will pay you. You know insurance better. Now, beyond that, even the letter of undertaking does not say the, your employer will pay you. Actually, that is the biggest uh, misunderstanding. Most people say, I was guaranteed by my employer no it was no guarantee it's normally a letter of undertaking to send your salary over uh and uh, your terminal benefits in case you you terminate and that's where the relationship ends they are basically show they are a cash flow a cash flow justification for you to learn not the security i hope i'm clear on that so recovering from those people is, is follows the same way there are always two things they are around the we, we looked at the ability to pay and the willingness to pay at the beginning but in in recovery you look at uh, at um, what you fear most and what you love most once you know those two uh, then you are on your way to recovery now when uh, those 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 do those people pay back actually even when they didn't want to pay back without collateral now when you draw it into a triangle with the ability to pay. Now, if someone is willing to pay, they, they, you can actually refigure, you can become even a consultant and show them how they can pay back, how they can negotiate with the bank. Now, that's, uh, that's, that, that, that's for that question. So in most cases, when such a situation happens, consult people what options are there, just I showed in that slide. Now, paying before the time and the penalty, the, the rationale of the penalty is, is in that uh, once we give you our money, I've given you one billion today, and I expect you to use it for a year. So I've calculated income for a full year. Now, after one week, you bring the one billion, boom. Now, it means now I have to struggle. Now, uh, rearranging 
to, to look for another one to take one billion does not go in one night. So it, it, the, the, the penalty fees is actually to compensate sort of for the cost of finding a new borrower. Remember, we said the four risks, one of them was liquidity. You can actually have a lot of money on your hand, which which uh, which you do not what have where to deposit, and that's the liquidity risk. Then, uh, then um, I can answer that again with another one I skipped on redu reducing loan loan principal. Uh, it's called normally called principal, not capital in the banking. The principal, if I have a loan of fifty million and I'm supposed to pay it over five years, just roughly straight line and say five, five, five. And, uh, and now within two years, I, I also pay, pay it, I'm able to pay it back. You go ahead and pay it back. If you really, rather than go and divert it, you'd rather go back and borrow more when you need it because your credit, your credit uh, risk goes, improves by that, the more loans you pay back. Then, uh, then, um, it's it's okay. It's very okay. Then uh, this the penalty. You can actually pay back without that penalty also. Uh, that's what a banker will not tell you, because the the penalty does not cater for reducing. Because reducing is not the full amount. But I can pay you back if I pay you fifty million. I pay you forty nine. I remain with one million. Now you will charge me on one million when I say now also recover it. I don't know if you get me. Yes. Now they they. Chattels and defaults and change location. I think this is the same as number one. Chattels, uh, uh, this is where you find uh, movable property, say stock in a shop, and you 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 use it. It's normally used in microfinance and other banks which deal in that category of uh, small businesses. So the chattel or movable assets of a, an organization. Now this person again becomes an is, 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 if he has moved away, he has sold it all. Now you can actually go after the actual borrower. The disappearance of security does not take away your loan liability. Now you can actually be sued. You can be conducted as a person. Now this is where you apply what you fear most and what you love most. Now this is... Um, the illegal transactions from banks, I will not so much talk about illegality of the banks because I have not, those particular cases have not studied who is telling the truth and who is not. But sometimes banks also goof. And, uh, and uh, not only banks, but staff actually within banks, you can actually be a very, very good, reliable bank and uh, someone comes and goofs. And clients also, the, what I'm advising you is to be the good clients who can negotiate with banks. But there are clients in town also who borrow very well knowing that they are not, they are not willing to pay back. And they will employ each and everything, employ every lawyer, employ every accountant, even employ your own staff to make sure they don't pay back. Now, that one, I will leave it at that. I'm, I'm not so, but the challenge is if you have been on the road, and you, you knock a border border, you know the reaction. It's like the person of the car is the one who has made a mistake, because in any case, he's a, he's a richer guy. So most people don't understand why banks are following you. Actually, the banks are poorer than you if, you if they could tell you, because the money they rent you is not their money in the first place. So they must recover that money. Even if they are willing to lose it, they still have to answer the Bank of Uganda, why do you put money into something you're not going to recover? You're doing money laundering. There are too many questions to answer to Bank of Uganda. Even if you were willing to lose the money, you would get a, a rating from BOU. So you must recover. And uh, but I'm 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 uh, I'm not going to talk about whether they were illegal or whatever because I'm not privy to to the full details of that. Uh, but I'm telling you, there are also people in town whose business actually is to defraud. Uh, I think uh, I think I've answered the, the questions, Dixon. Thank you, thank you, Dan. Um, yes, you actually answered all the questions. Uh, we have more questions here. This is the final round of questions. <clears throat> can the first one? Can any borrower have? Can any? The the key word is any borrower have chance to negotiate with a bank, or or is it those borrowing in billions of dollars? This one, I'm going to answer it for you, Dan. 
Yes, the answer is yes. Whether you're borrowing 100K or 100 million or 100 billion, you can negotiate with the bank. Early um, then early retirement, something still about early retirement. Yes, I got a loan um, and I've paid in advance, including the interest. We still don't understand why the bank says, because you have paid early and we have nowhere to put this money, can they just keep it in their vault and then they don't charge us? Number three, um, it's an interesting lecture. I wait to hear testimonial experiences from lions at some Chigani or in future. Most often, the theoretical perspectives and real time or physical experiences and Ah, uh, yeah, this is from Dr. Arthur from MOH, Minister of Health. He was trying to say that uh, some of these theoretical things we discuss here may not be, may be different when we enter the banking goals when we default or when we apply for the loans. And the last one, what happens when I get a salary loan and later I lose my job? What do I do? What options does the bank have? What options does my employer have? I think you have touched this, but maybe something you may not have touched. I, lose, I get a loan, I lose my job, my retirement benefits and whatever cannot pay off the loan. What do I do? What options does the bank have? What options does uh, the employer have? Maybe you can clarify on that. Then another question here. Um, uh, this is from, this is from, Gala, uh, okay. This man still up to now has not renamed this. What would be, what would be the win, win situation if as a borrower, if as a borrower, I suspect that the bank staff are colluding with debt collectors in an event of delayed reimbursement or even default. Let me read that again. What would be the win situation if as a borrower, I suspect that the bank staff are colluding with debt collectors in an event of delayed reimbursement or even default. I hope you've understood it. Now, this is a the last round of questions. So I'm going to request members who have questions, please raise your hand. Francis, oh, oh uh, you have a question, I guess. You raise your hand or you unmute and then you fire your question. This is the last, last round of questions, please. Okay, normally we close at 7.40, so we were remaining just a few minutes to close. Dan, you can take those questions and then we'll see how to close. Yes, uh, thank you for those two questions. Uh, losing a job, losing a job uh, is the same as uh, borrowing, uh, borrowing money and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and your, your kiosk gets burnt down or the clients simply don't buy, or the, the, the goods are stolen. You have lost cash flow. You have not lost uh, the, the, the responsibility to the loan. So in this case, you, you need to, there are many people actually who have found businesses out of trying to pay loans. Because you have lost a job, then you come up. Now, this is the best time I told you at this point, one, you you also don't have a choice you have to negotiate you have to talk to the bank sort of secondly the bank also has to listen to you because they know the situation is no longer last last time and they also want you off the book and clean now if you can actually be able to figure it out you have a business you can actually negotiate one of the things you can negotiate is extend the period of the time now secure the bank when the bank sees you are willing to secure it, then it, it can now listen to you and talk. You can, be, you, you can be able to extend your period. If you are going to pay within one year, you can actually pay in three years. The bank can actually waive off interest if you insist, depending on how good and how bad and how feasible it is. Because one, why the bank will waive off interest is that if you owe the bank 80 million and maybe you are being charged at 20%, 
roughly in a year's time it will become 100 million but if they can wave off that 20 and get the 80 it means in one year they will get back their 100 million i don't know if you get the logic now that is the you need to know what the bank is thinking about the bank i think about but if it remains on the book then it must carry on provisions and very soon they must provide for the full 80 out of their profit that's what the bank goes through so you, you, it, when you say you can pay back all the principal now you'd rather actually go and borrow from another institution and pay it simple because that's a new loan now before it defaults because before you yourself go to crb or the credit reference bureau and no other loan no other bank would want to touch you now that is the biggest problem most people actually fall into you default with one bank you 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 actually insist on not paying back now you go into to CRB. Once you have gone to CRB, now it becomes very difficult to find any other financing. Now you 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 try and look for where we cannot exhaust ways here because that's a long and very forest peculiar to each circumstance. The other part is um, is um, if the collectors are conniving with the with the with the bank staff in what you bring in it's not so clear but i i presume you are putting in money but it's not being reflected now number one you need to be very clear and uh, understand be open yourself they, they don't give room for any person to play around with your money how you know the you know your original relationship manager or the person from the bank working on you by the time you got the collector it means the relationship manager has actually failed with you. There is no relationship manager or bank that is going to outsource you when you are actually willing to talk and cooperate. So by the time they outsource you, it means in a way they are tired of you already. So they want someone else to handle. So, but once you are there, you can find yourself there even if you are not a hardcore. You you make sure everybody is in the know, so that no one can hide. If you deposit. For send you are you are you are deposit slip to to the bank and to the side that reconciliation can be done immediately. But the other part is that when you can't keep your account, the take down account active, this money most cases comes and goes to a suspense account. Now there could be a time lag between reconciling it. Now you put the post sometimes switch off the phone. And then by the time the reconciliation happens, time has gone, and uh, you are being counted in another category. But without also denying your case, there can be collusion. Some people actually, the ones who collude are normally the ones who want to bribe the, 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 the collectors. Now, when you get into, uh, into, into bribing practice, now then the, the, the collector knows very well you are, not, you are not open with the bank, therefore they can do something in between. So try as much as possible to be transparent and follow up. When you are the one following up, that many of viewers will never be touched because they know you are going to follow up immediately. I hope I've answered that. Now, the questions are too many. If you, if you don't mind, I can read you my number. Don't mind, you can send me WhatsApps. I can always answer your questions. They will never end. Uh, yeah, yeah you... You, you can read you can read your number yeah you can read it now my number is 0772 428 can you say that again 0772 428 643 or you can send an email info at banner.co.ug Banner is B A N A R. Info at banner.co.ug. Thank you, Dan. The telephone is 0772 428 It's on WhatsApp. Thank you, Dan. And I hope the services you offer are they, is that what they call pro bono? Imran Ak, you have a question, please. Very pro bono. Imran. Uh, thank, 
Uh, thank you, moderator. I have no question, but I saw my brother, Mr. Wabonereirwe, and I thought I should pass uh, uh, a vote of thanks with your permission. Dan, I'm happy to see you after a long time, and I want to thank you for the great uh, information about banking you have shared today. Um, I know you as one person who breathes, who eats and sleeps banking, and I'm not surprised that uh, we had this Chiganiro about banking from you. Thank you so much, and thank you, moderator, for allowing me to use this opportunity to speak my, to my brother and friend. Thank you. Thank you, Imran. Uh, thank you. At the, at the back of your mind, Imran, you know that before the year ends, you'll, you'll facilitate one of these Chiganiro sessions somewhere in December. Imran, you still have my book, Isheka Tabazi. <laughs> I have even shared it on the Forum of Ontario School and I'm crazy about it. Yes, I do. Thank you, brother. The tiebreaker, it always analogs or not, if you care to read it. I do read it. Okay, uh, next question. Can we have the next question? It seems people don't have questions today, or they were all addressed. Um, now, since there are no questions, I'm going to request uh, uh, Daniel to give his uh, part, uh, closing remarks and uh, then we'll ask uh, one of the members from the SOBA executive to close the session. And of course, as usual, we'll have the last 10 minutes discuss other items. So Dan, let me give you two minutes to make your closing remarks. Hey, thank you, thank you, Dixon, and thank you for inviting me to share ideas with, uh, with others. Sometimes in our different fields, what we take for granted is what other people are looking for. So sharing these ideas, and uh, this is, uh, these are ideas we normally share freely at Rotary as we give back to community. And uh, members, I actually also entice you to come and be members of Rotary because at every Rotary meeting weekly, there is always such talks. And uh, and uh, and uh, it's uh, an honorable organization that keeps back to society. And uh, many people think it's for only the rich. Yes, the rich at heart, and those who are not willing to promote poverty. Then, uh, 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 thank you all members for listening to us. Uh, uh, we we if you have such needs. You can always, it doesn't have to be a contract that we are serving a contract. Many of these, there are many people have helped out of, uh, there's actually one lady who came, she's still employed with a, with a certain bank, I won't mention, in case you know her. And uh, this lady was actually having um, 12 loans from different funders. And she was defaulting on all of them now she had actually grown old, she had grown thin, she had uh, basically everything was on. I think what uh, saved her most is, uh, is uh, she, she kept her faith, she kept praying, she kept praying. And uh, along the way, she said she Googled up our, our, our company, she just called me, I just looked at her and I said, no, I will help you. Uh, we helped her actually, I, 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 I dealt with her personally and uh, and uh, and uh, as we speak, I think she had remained with one Anna, one lender who is a commercial bank, and uh, the others were money lenders and friends. So she was basically losing friends, and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, money and stress was actually almost killing her. The the she she's remaining with uh, her own employer who is lending her at a much lower rate. And, uh, and one other commercial bank, which is of course much lower than money lenders uh, and, and a bit more general. Now the target is by end of this year, she's to remain with only one lender. Now that's one of the things you can find yourself borrowed that you cannot even think before you breathe, a call comes in and that call is threatening. Now you pay off these guys, you start borrowing more pay off these guys and the situation gets worse. 
And uh, yet when you bring in another cool mind who is not emotionally involved, because I'm not emotionally involved, if it was me, I would actually be as emotionally involved, probably worse than her. But uh, a cool mind, it doesn't have to be me or another person uh, who is uh, doing this. Now, and we never charged her for anything. And, uh, and uh, let alone, uh, basically she's on that. What I'm saying this is that um, uh, uh, loan management, when mostly when it doesn't come out right, can actually lead to ending your own life. You can either kill yourself or the loan itself can actually kill you out of stress without knowing. So let's uh, mind our health and let's uh, make this within, it's within our ability to manage it. Thank you. Even when it fails, you can actually admit you have failed and live with it rather than living in denial. And uh, once you live in denial, you can actually die. I've seen quite a number. But as business people, you fall down, you get up. You fall down seven times, get up eight. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. I'm going to request... Uh, uh, this is... Uh, and one of the members on the executive, Agre. Agre, I hope you're there. I'm there. Thank you. Yeah, kind of close the session. The official one, but we shall proceed with uh, we shall proceed with uh, our usual one. Please note next week, next Saturday. Saturday we are having. Uh, oof, I hope I don't forget his name. Apollo Muyanja. Apollo Muyanja works on a project with the MasterCard Foundation, he's our OB, and uh, he said he has something for the school or for the young boys at school, which he wants to introduce to us. So he's going to have his session next week on Saturday, and uh, the following Saturday, which will be on 13th November, our other doctor who failed to show two weeks ago, Dr. Nwamanya will be back with uh, his sessions on agriculture and agribusiness. So next week is Apollo Muyanja on Saturday. Uh, he works on a project with MasterCard Foundation and he said he has something for the school and for the, 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 the students at the school. Then the following one will be Dr. Nwamanya from Uganda National Farmers is the president of the International Farmers Federation. So those are the next two sessions. Um, Agre, please close the session. Uh, thank you, Danny. Thank you, Dixon, and uh, all the members that are that were present on this call, especially our elders who are who never miss. Uh, it was one of those uh, uh, calls where we learned a lot about uh, financial management how to source for finances, how to manage the, the finances that we source, and how to also pay back and uh, live stress-free lives. A lot has been learned, and uh, we appreciate our senior OB for giving us his time and uh, these insights. Uh, we also appreciate the fact that you have agreed to, to be engaged beyond this Chiganiro on a one-to-one -one basis. Because issues of finance, as most people may not be willing to share their challenges online. But the fact that you have accepted, we are so grateful. Uh, to the rest of the members, please keep joining. Uh, we keep running so many things, uh, like uh, 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 Dr. Mungereza put it. If you miss, you miss a lot of uh, information that would, uh, uh, would have made you a better person. On, the, on behalf of the executive, we are so grateful and we shall keep bringing you more of this uh, with time. And for those who would, who would love to participate in this began as uh, uh, presenters, do not hesitate to contact Dixon uh, and uh, so that you can be put on the program. I wish you a, a lovely evening, be blessed and remember to go to church tomorrow. Amen. Thank you, Agre. Uh, the issue of church, you leave it to us. We always know how to go to church, so you don't need to remind us. Um, 